Hey guys, welcome to Flawless and Fives YouTube channel. I'm Marie and um, this is my channel. So I've got a whole bunch of new mascara clients that have been sending me messages and their makeup's in and they're so excited but they don't know what to do with it because it's really different than what we're used to and that's fine. And so I figured I'd make a quick video to help you guys out. Um, and I clip my hair out of the way with one of my awesome alligator clips these things I love them because they don't leave kinks in your hair like the flat ones do like they conform to your hair so obviously I have like the giant artist size palette um it's worth its weight in gold you guys because it literally holds all the things so I've got all of my foundations and my illuminators and lip and cheek colors that I wear regularly there and then I have all of my shadows and my powder there so yay you want to try to keep your powder separate from your creams if possible i do keep my illuminators in with um my lip and cheeks and you can see like a little bit of it gets on there but if one of these cracks i'm not worried about it like of like a black eyeshadow ruining my foundation or something so i'm gonna show you my brushes really quickly these are like my daily use brushes you could totally get away with just having one or two. If you can get all of them, great. They're all fantastic. But this is the B Squared Bronzer Brush. I love this guy for like a light application of makeup. Also great to apply my bronzer. This is our new Buffy brush. This is great for a more um, full coverage look. Uh, it's spectacular. And all of these brushes are double-ended. Play with them. Do what works for you, okay? Then this is our Best Blend Forever Blush Brush, and this is the Blend and Tap Eyeshadow Brush. So these are like my go-tos, and then of course the Hotline Eyebrow Brush. Um, these are my go-tos that I have every day, like if I travel. If I could only take one, it would probably be the, um, the Buffy, would be my go-to if I could only take one brush, but that's not the case. So, I'm going to get started. Now, if you did not get Bella Bronzer, you will skip this trick. But this is a great trick for summer. Also, if you're finding that your highlight shade is just a little bit too light for you because you got a tan, this is a great way to work with that. So, this is the Bella Bronzer. And I'm going to go in with the small end of my B Squared brush. And I'm going to put that bronzer where you would normally, well, where you normally bronze, but where you normally will highlight your face with your highlighter which is essentially your main foundation shade. Okay, so I'm gonna go in like that. I'm gonna sort of buff that out. And I can usually get my whole face done in about five minutes if I'm not talking my way through it. I already have a really light application of eyeshadow on. I've just got a little bit of our, oh, what is that? I think that's Gold Digger eyeshadow and then some magnetic liner and my Silly George lashes just stuck on. So that's all I've got going on right now. But sort of almost like a, like a Zorro mask and then a little bit on your chin is where you're going to put that. And you're going to blend it as you go with this brush because it's one thing that issue that my clients have the most, especially new clients, is application. So they're putting too much makeup on their brush and smearing it across their face like spackle. It's not how we roll, okay? Very light, we build the coverage. Um, so if you've got this brush and you're doing the bronzer, you can stick with this brush. If you prefer a lighter application, stick with this brush. You're gonna go into your main highlight shade, okay? I'm going to use the Buffy brush, then do half my face so you guys can see what that looks like. I'm going to go into Sunlit, which believe it or not, is this really yellow one. And I'm going to go over, I'm going to go over where I just put that bronzer. And you can see how it just gives you this really pretty inner glow. And I'm just sort of patting it into my skin. Very light application. You don't need much of this makeup. It is an amazing foundation. You don't have to have heavy. Full and heavy are not one and the same, ladies, okay? Full coverage is fine. Heavy coverage looks cakey and gross, and nobody likes that. We've all seen those women at the store or at the mall that have nine pounds of makeup on and it's stuck in their pores and it's stuck in their wrinkles and it makes them look about 10 years older than they actually are. That is not the look we're going for. Okay, so that's my highlight applied with the Buffy brush. I'm gonna go into my highlight again 
with the B squared. And I'm just gonna show you how it's just sort of a lighter, it's just a lighter application. It doesn't go on as heavy. So if you're more of like a BB cream, like you can see the difference. This isn't heavy by any stretch, but this is much lighter. This is what I prefer. So I'm just gonna stick with this one and I'm gonna kind of buff that off a little bit. Um, but it's, once again, like this makeup is for everybody. I've got some women who need full coverage and prefer a more made up look. And I have other women that are ultra natural. And like when they reached out to me, they were like, listen, I don't wear makeup like you do. Like trying not to like hurt my feelings, which I get it. Not everybody's like Glamazon, that's fine. Um, but anyway, and then you're just gonna buff sort of all over the place. Um, I don't really go over my cheekbones too much, but I kind of like, up against that sort of bronzer line that we've got there. And that'll sort of help me, that'll serve as my marker for um, where I'm gonna put my contour. Okay, so that's my main highlight. My bronzer's on, main highlight's on. Also, if you want really full coverage, you can put that main highlight all over your entire face. Okay, no problem with that. Then I'm going to go back to my Buffy brush. I'm gonna use a small end and I'm gonna go into my contour. I use the indigo. Everybody's scared of indigo. Don't be, it's really pretty. And we blend this, girls. Tap the brush, just tap it in there. And I just sort of push it into that cheekbone and I follow the cheekbone up to my hairline. So you're sort of coming in like, a, like just a little bit of a Nike swoosh. Now you could leave it like that or you can darken it up a little bit. I tend to go a little on the darker side with the contour. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Now you guys can see I've got some discoloration here and I'm gonna show you just how I kind of hide that. So I come in, this is some melasma that I got from having babies. Um, and it's honestly getting a lot better, but it's still there. So if I don't blend my contour right or if I put it on too heavy, it sort of accentuates it, but I know how to hide that, so. I'm just gonna them in here just like that all right and see how those cheekbones just like explode off your face now when you've got that contour and you can still sort of see that patch but we're not going to worry about that till after we blend everything and then you're going to take it up here go across the hairline if you have a big forehead don't be afraid to bring it kind of down one thing I see a lot of is like this stripe of demarcation with contour to break that up I always bring my contour down, almost touching my eyebrow, like the arch of my brow. So it kind of goes like in a wave. And I just like the way that that looks better. To each their own. If you have a little bitty forehead, you may not need to contour it at all. I have a five head, so I contour the crap out of it. All right, contour is on. You could also do your jaw and you just sort of go right along the edge of the jaw like that, and it just sort of chisels it. It creates shadow, and you bring it up towards the ear, and then bring it down under the chin so that you don't get the dreaded baseline, okay? There. Same thing over here. And you just wanna come right on the edge of that jawline. Don't come up too high, bring it around the chin, and just bring everything back. Because what the contour does is it creates shadow where there wasn't any, and it chisels out your features, okay? So, there we go with that. We've got that going on, all looks well. Need to adjust my lighting a little bit, there we go. Okay, um, so that looks good, all of that's great. Then I'm gonna go in with my best blend forever. I'm gonna go into my, I always mix blushes. This is Dahlia, it's one of my favorites. And I just sort of kiss the front of that contour, like right where the contour meets the highlight. And then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna kiss it over here, just like that. And I'm gonna leave it that way for now, but I'll probably go back in over it with another color in a minute. So. That is a full face of contour. There are two different ways to blend. You can blend with a sponge, 
or you can blend with your brush. It's totally up to you. Some people love the sponge, some love the brush. I bounce back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this side with the sponge and you're just sort of, you're not rubbing, you're pressing the makeup into the skin. Just in sort of a firm dabbing motion, okay? And you can see how that just blends everything to a sheer perfection. Just like that. Okay, so that side's blended with the sponge. Now we're gonna come over here with the small end of the brush. I always just sort of buff it off on my arm in case there's any excess makeup. And you just go in a gentle circular motion and you just sort of blend everything out. Either way works. I like both. It just kind of depends on what I've got time for and what I feel like doing <laughs> as the mood strikes me, okay? So there, everything's blended. Looks lovely. This could totally be a finished look. If you were in a hurry, totally could be a finished look. I need to come back, that blended in really nicely actually, but I'm probably gonna use my finger and just fill the littlest bit right there. And I barely have anything at all on my finger, you guys. Like, you can hardly see what's on my finger, okay? Just like that. That side looks good. Uh, maybe a little bit. Don't be afraid to get your fingers dirty. Okay. Now, I am a two highlight girl. That is one of the things I'm a stickler for. You can use your ring finger. Or, if you've got this beauty, you can use the under, other end of this blush, brush. I'm gonna go into linen, which is one of our lightest colors, and I'm going to really make this under eye and the center of my face pop, okay? I'm gonna do one side first, um, and I'm just gonna kinda use my finger. I'm just dabbing it in there. I'm gonna come right up into the corner of my eye and sort of bring it down the side of my nose, like that. And then I'm gonna sweep it out into this sort of large pie shape. Just like that. Do you see how that side of my face just brightened right up? Like, and it camouflages like under eye puffiness really, really well. Okay. So, and I'm just gonna, you don't just do your under eye. That's actually gonna accentuate any puffiness. You're literally doing this whole pie shaped area. Okay. And I even bring it onto the side of my nose. Just like that. Then you'll run some down the center of the nose. A little bit on the forehead. I sort of do like a fanned out. Just like that, I think like a peacock tail. A little bit right here on the cupid's bow. A little bit on the chin. If you have a very fair neck, you could either put some bronzer on your neck or you could go under your contour with that lighter color and that's gonna tie, it's also gonna chisel really nicely the look of your contour. It's also gonna tie the lightness in with your neck, okay? Then we're gonna blend it again. You can either use the brush or the sponge. I'm gonna use the brush. And you just buff that in, okay? Just like that. Super, super light application, ladies. That's the main thing to remember use a light hand or you're going to call me and you're going to say my makeup isn't going on right it doesn't look like yours it feels sticky and heavy and awful and i don't understand and it's sliding around on my skin and i'm going to say you're using too much product okay so can we see the difference with that brightened spot under my eye so i'm going to do it really quickly over here And, well, I've already got it on my finger here. I'll just wipe it off so you guys can see. If you want to use the brush, use this end. Same thing. Go up into that tear duct and bring it down. The brush is going to give you a heavier coverage than your finger will. And just bring it out and sort of fan that down into this big triangle. Just like that. Um, and really quickly while we're here, I also love a contoured nose. I don't have a very wide nose, so I just sort of 
brighten the edge of mine a little bit with the contour or darken rather. Um, if you have a wide nose, do not contour the edge of your nose. Come in a little bit because you're just going to accentuate how wide your nose is if you contour on the edges of it. So bring that down. Just like that. And like that. And then I'm going to go down with just a little bit more highlight, just right on the bridge. Just this teeny little stripe. Chiseled. And then I'm going to blend again. All right. Now, one thing I forgot to show you guys because it never fails when I do a video. I usually start with my stay spray. Um which is our setting spray, and I'll start my blank face with that. I already had it on when I started this video. Um, you can also use it at the end to set your makeup. If you're a dry-skinned girl, that's probably going to be your best bet. If you're oily like me and live in the South like me, you're going to want to bake some powder. So I've got my vanilla dust powder, Doo -doo. and I'm going to use my spoolie from my brow brush, and I'm going to scrape up a pretty significant amount of makeup. Just like that. Then I'm gonna take my sponge, I'm gonna press it into that powder, and I'm gonna push it onto my face as where I get especially oily. So your T-zone, your under your eyes, your cheeks, your forehead, your nose, and we're gonna put it on heavy, but bear with me. You put it on real heavy at first, and then you let it sit for about, preferably about five minutes. If you don't have five minutes, just as long as you can let it sit there. Knock a little bit more loose. You can also use any kind of loose translucent powder if you have other stuff you'd like to use. This is what works best for my skin. I have found that other powders that I've tried work for a while, but by the end of the day, they look cakey and they feel heavy and I just don't like it. And our vanilla dust is made to work with our makeup. So you're gonna let that sit while it sits. I'm gonna fill in my eyebrows really, really quickly. I had a microbladed, but they get a little ashy with the makeup. So you can either use our contour or a shadow. I'm gonna use a shadow today. I like to use Philly on my brows because it's warm and my brows are kind of cool. So it fills them in nicely and quickly and evenly and it doesn't take me long. But indigo is great for brows as well. Um, so is cola if you have really dark brows or black hair. So just darkening that up a little bit. Just following the hairline. get that white powder off of there and sort of comb them out just like that and I'm gonna put some lip color on I have just this is my natural lip color I'm gonna put on I've got some gloss on um, clear gloss I'm going to go into summer love which is that one right there it's just a really pretty sheer summery pink Mm, so pretty. Just like that. And then I am going to grab that brush I contoured my nose with. And I'm going to just go under my lip right here. And I'm going to contour underneath that lip. And you'll see how that, see how that makes my pout just 
So just a little bit under the lip is good. Now that that makeup has set, I'm gonna get the fluffy end of this brush, the B squared. Go back into the powder and I'm going to buff where I didn't put any and then I'm going to buff off where I put it on heavy and baked it. And you can see how it just gives you this absolutely gorgeous matte look to your foundation, but it's not heavy. It's not icky looking or heavy feeling. It doesn't look like I have nine pounds of makeup on. It doesn't feel like I have any makeup on. And that's the goal. Look at that, you guys. Flawless finish. Now I know that this has taken me about 20 minutes, but like I said, I'm talking you guys through it. So it's gonna take a little bit longer. And then just to sort of touch things up, I've got my lip plumping gloss from City Beauty. This stuff is my jam. There is, if you go to my Instagram page, flawless underscore in underscore five, I have a link tree link with a discount for this amazing plumping. And then very last thing that I do is I use that same blush brush and I go into like one of the nude, like this is ballet or ballerina. And I just like to have more of a sheer look on my cheeks. So I'll go over my cheek with that. I'm going to use the other end and I'm going to go into Glamazing and I'm going to sort of Brighten up my Cupid's bow. Glamazing is one of our powder illuminators. It's gorgeous. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of Glamazing on that cheekbone. And you guys can see, it just gives you this amazing candlelit glow. It's not crazy. See how nice that is? It's not crazy. It's just the softest little glow. And I even like to put just a little bit down my nose. And then last touch, let me take my eyeshadow brush and I go right in the tear ducts with it. And that just really makes your inner eyes pop. Look how pretty that is. And you could even do a little bit under the brow bone. And there we go. A full face of mascara for you new girls. Let my hair out so you can see. You can't beat it, ladies. I'm a tried and true makeup snob. I have not ordered anything foundation wise from another company in two years because I am so obsessed. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it helped you. If you still need hands on help, please reach out to me, message me. I'm here to serve. Thanks so much.